We'll start today by introducing two ideas. The first is mutually exclusive. Two events A and B are mutually exclusive if they cannot both happen at the same time. So visually, I can represent this but with uh, two circles that don't overlap. That's a representation of mutually exclusive. Because you cannot be in both circles at the same time. If you're in circle A, then definitely you are not in circle B. If you're in circle B, then definitely you're not in circle A. So these two events mutually exclude each other from happening. The representation for not mutually exclusive would be two circles that do overlap. So this is a representation of not mutually exclusive. In this picture, there is a way for you to be in both circles at the same time. If you are in this overlapping area, then you are in circle A, and at the same time, you're in circle B. So you can be in both circles at the same time if you're in that overlapping area. So that's why sometimes these are called two circles that are disjoint. That's why sometimes mutually exclusive is called disjoint. The next idea is independence. So two events are independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. In other words, the two events don't, uh, don't have anything to do with each other at all. They don't affect each other at all. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So for each pair of events, we're going to decide whether they are mutually exclusive and then also whether they are independent. Part A, event C is flipping a coin and getting heads. Event D is rolling a die and getting a six. First question we'll ask is, are these two things mutually exclusive? And the question we should ask is, can these two things both happen at the same time? Can you get a heads on a coin and at the same time get a six on a dice? Yes, you can, right? They're both happening at the same time right there. So if your answer is yes, Right. If they can, can happen at the same time, then we're in this situation, right, where we can be in both circles at the same time. It's a not. So it would be a not mutually exclusive. The second thing we want to ask is, are these two things independent? So does getting a heads on a coin affect whether or not you get a six on a dice. No, it does not, right? Getting a heads on a coin doesn't affect whether or not you're gonna get a six on a dice at all, right? The dice doesn't care what happens with the coin, whether it's heads or tails, okay? So because it's no, they don't affect each other at all, this would be independent. Part B, event E is you exercise regularly. Event H is you have heart disease. Okay, first let's ask about mutually exclusive. Okay, question we should ask is, can these two things happen at the same time? Can you exercise regularly and at the same time have heart disease? Yes, it's possible, right? So if your answer is yes, then we are in this situation, right, where they both can happen at the same time, the overlap. This will be not mutually exclusive. Second thing we want to ask is, are these two things independent? Okay, question we should ask is, does one affect the other? Okay, does exercising regularly affect whether or not you have heart disease? I think it's a yes, right? If you exercise regularly, hopefully that will reduce your uh, probability of getting heart disease. Right? Because they do affect each other, this will be not independent. Part C, 
drawing a card from deck, getting a queen. So here's a deck, getting a queen. Not replacing, and then drawing a second card and getting a queen. Okay, not putting it back, drawing another card and getting a queen. First question we need to ask is, are these two things mutually exclusive? Which is basically the question of, can do these two things happen at the same time? Can you get a queen, not put the card back, draw a second card and get a second queen? Well, yes, right? It just happened right there. So it's because it's a yes, this will be not mutually exclusive. Second thing we want to ask is, are these two things independent? Okay, so if you draw a card and you don't put it back, does that first draw affect what happens for the second draw? And yes, it does. In a deck of cards, there's four queens. So if I know that that first card is a queen, then there's only three queens left that I can choose from for my second draw because I'm not putting that first queen back. Whereas if I know that the first card is not a queen, say for instance, it's a 10, if I know that that first draw is a 10, then I still have four queens left in my deck to choose from. So knowing what happens on the first draw affects how many queens I have left in my, sec in, in my deck from the second draw, which means it affects the probability of getting a queen on my second draw. All right, so because they do affect, um, this would be not independent. Part D, similar situation, drawing a card from a deck, getting a queen. This time, we're gonna put it back, shuffle, and then draw a second card. Okay, first question we wanna ask ourselves is, are these two things mutually exclusive? In other words, can these two things happen at the same time? Can you get a queen, put it back, reshuffle, pick a second card, and get a queen again? Right. Can you get two queens? Yes, you can. Right? Because yes, you can get two queens. We're in this situation where um, you can be in both at the same time. This will be not mutually exclusive. Second question we want to ask is, are these two things independent? So. If I know I got a queen on the first draw, but this time I put it back and reshuffle, would that affect whether or not I get a queen on the second draw? And so this differs from part C. Part C, we got a queen, we didn't put it back. Okay, so because we didn't put it back, it changes the probability of getting a second queen because if I know the first draw is a queen, then that reduces the probability of getting a queen again because there's now one less queen to choose from. But in part D, where I'm putting it back and reshuffling, I'm basically resetting the situation. So it doesn't really matter what I get on the first draw. Because I'm putting it back, I'm always going to have four queens to choose from for my second draw. So it doesn't change the probability of getting a second queen. So because it doesn't affect the second draw, um, this would be, they are independent. So independent meaning that they don't affect each other. So these two uh, examples are pretty important in statistics. The first part C here is you are picking and then you're not putting uh, the queen back. So that's called sampling without replacement. And so it's important to realize that when you sample without replacement, it's not independent. Part D, where we pick a queen and then we put it back and reshuffle, that's called sampling with replacement. And so if you are sampling with replacement, they are independent. Part E. Event A is you are 18 years old. Event B, 
you buy alcohol. First thing we'll ask is, are these two things mutually exclusive? So can those two things happen at the same time? Can you be 18 years old and at the same time buy alcohol from a store? Legally. So legally, can these two things happen at the same time? Can you be 18 and at the same time buy alcohol? No, not, not in this country. So to be in this country to buy alcohol, you have to be 21 or over. So these two things cannot both happen at the same time. So if they cannot happen at the same time, you're in this situation, right, where you can't be in both circles at once at the same time. So this would be mutually exclusive. What about independent? Does one affect the other? Does knowing that a person is 18 years old affect whether or not they can buy alcohol? Yes, it does, right? So if I know that you are 18 years old, then I know for sure that you're not gonna buy alcohol. And then also the other way around. If I see you buying alcohol at a store, then I know for sure you're not 18 years old because I know for sure you are 21 or over. They do affect each other. So because they do affect each other, uh, these are not independent. All right, so we just talked about mutually exclusive and independent using words. Both of these ideas have a math definition, which we'll need later on. For mutually exclusive, the math definition is going to be going to involve the probability of A and B. And remember, the word and means A and B at the same time. So if mutually exclusive means that they cannot both happen at the same time, then the probability of A and B both happen at the same time is what? So cannot happen at the same time is what probability? Zero. Okay, so this is saying the probability of A and B both happening at the same time is zero, meaning that it's never gonna happen. For independent, the math definition is going to be, there's actually three of them. I'll write the first one here. Okay, this is saying the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B. So what this is saying is that adding on this given B, so that means that given B already occurred, adding on this given B didn't change the answer um, for regular probability of A. So adding on the given B is the same answer as just regular probability of A without the given B on there. That's what we mean by B not affecting A, because adding on the given B didn't change the answer. Now, there's two other definitions, which I won't be using uh, very much in this class, but I'll write it here to be complete. The second equation or definition is gonna be the same thing here, except replace the B's with, B's with A's, or the A's with B's. So it's gonna say probability of B equals probability of B given A. Okay, same idea as what I said for the first one. This is saying left side is regular probability of B, right side is probability of B given that A already occurred. So adding on this given A didn't change the answer. So adding on a given A is the same answer as just regular probability of B, which is exactly what, what we mean by A not affecting B at all. The third equation or third definition is this. probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. Now this comes from something that we already talked about in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we had this multiplication, multiplication rule for probabilities. And it said probability of A and then B is probability of A times probability of B given A. So if A and B are independent, then we just said here that probability of a, B given A is the same thing as regular probability of B. Right, so you just replace probability B given A 
with just regular probability b, then you get exactly this. So I won't be using two and three very much in this class. So the main ones I'll use is probability of a and b equals zero for mutually exclusive. And then for independent, probability of a equals probability of a given b. Let's see how we would use those two math definitions. Here we have a contingency table or a two-way table that shows the city people live in and also their favorite mode of transportation. Part A says, let A be the event that the person is from Sacramento. Let B be the event that the person prefers travel by plane. Our A and B independent explain. And what I mean by explain is I want you to check one of those math definitions, either this one or this one. So which one are we checking? This one's asking about independent, so we should check the definition for independent, which is that one. So let me recopy that. P of A equals P of A given B. And then let me also write what A stands for and what B stands for in this question. So A stands for Sacramento. So we're looking for probability of Sacramento equals probability of a Sacramento given what's B. B is prefers travel by plane, so plane. Probability of Sacramento equals probability of Sacramento given plane. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the probabilities on the left side and the probability on the right side separately. Okay, left side, probability of getting someone who is from Sacramento. So this is just regular probability that we talked about in the last lecture. What's on top, what's on bottom? So the bottom, so this is regular probability. So the bottom is gonna be how many different people can I choose from? In other words, how many different people are there total in my sample? Add up all the frequencies and get a total. So six plus 15 plus 12, plus five plus nine plus 10, plus zero, plus six, plus 17, 80. Okay, that's the bottom, the left side. Up top, how many people are from Sacramento? So Sacramento would be six, 15, 12. So six plus 15 plus 12. It's 33. All right, that's the left side. The right side is probability of SAC given plane. So this is a conditional probability. So anytime you have a conditional probability, the bottom is not gonna be the total 80, right? Because conditional probability is telling you to focus on a certain part of the table. So what are we focusing on here? We're gonna focus on the given part, which is the second, um, the second thing in the notation. So we're gonna focus on plane for the top and the bottom. So ignore the rest of the table, focus just on the plane numbers. So focusing just on the plane numbers for the bottom, what is the total? So just, just on the plane numbers, what is the total? That's gonna be 12 plus 10 plus 17, 39. And then for the top, still focusing just on the plane numbers, how many are from Sacramento? So just on the plane numbers, how many are from Sacramento? 12. And now to answer our question, are they independent? What you wanna do is check the left, check the right, are they equal or not? So right now they're in fraction form, which is hard to tell whether they're equal or not. So what we'll do is we'll divide and get a decimal. So for the left side, 33 over 80. Um, I'll round here, that's 0 0.413. On the right side, 12 over 39, 0 0.308. Okay, are they equal? No, so they're not equal. 
so they're not independent. Part B, let A be the event that the person prefers travel by car, let B be the event that the person is from Los Angeles. Are A and B mutually exclusive? Okay, so we have to check one of those equations. I should actually say here that we're checking that equation. So which equation are we checking? This one or this one? This one's asking about mutually exclusive. So we should check the one for mutually exclusive, which is this one. So P of A and B equals zero. So we're checking P of A and B equals zero. And then let me write what A represents and what B represents in this question. Uh, a represents prefers travel by car. So we're looking for probability of car. And what's B? B is Los Angeles, so LA. Okay, check the left, check the right, and then see if they're equal. Left side, probably of A, probably of car and LA. So this is a probability that doesn't involve the word given. So if it doesn't involve the given, which is, means that it's not conditional probability. So if it doesn't involve the, the word given, then the bottom is going to be the total, which is 80. For the top, how many are car and LA? So and meaning at the same time. So how many like car and at the same time are from LA? So car and LA will be the zero, right? Zero means that there's zero from LA and at the same time they like car. So let's talk about that zero. Okay, right side is already done. Right side is just a zero. Question is, are they equal or not? Left side, 0 over 80. So if you don't know what that is right away, just do it on your calculator. 0 divided by 80, it's 0. Are they equal? Yes, they are equal. So if they are equal, then yes, it is mutually exclusive. Part C, let A be the event that the person prefers travel by train, let B be the event that the person is from San Francisco. Are A and B independent? So which equation are we checking? This one's talking about independent. We should check the one for independent, which is this one. P of A equals P of A given B. And then let me replace A and B with what they represent in this question. A represents train. So we're talking about train equals probability of train given what's B. B is San Francisco, SF. Okay, find the probabilities on the left and on the right and then we'll check whether they are equal. Left side is just regular probability of train Okay, this is not a conditional probability. We didn't, we don't have the, the word given, which means the bottom will be the total, which is 80. Up top, how many are train? How many like train? Train would be 15, 9, and 6. So 15, 9, and 6 together. It's 30. Okay, that's the left side. Right side, probability of train given SF. So anytime you have the word given, uh, this is a conditional probability, which means you're going to focus on a certain part of the table. What are we focusing on? We're focusing on the given part, which is the second part in the notation. So we're going to focus on the SF for the top and bottom. Okay, start with the bottom. 
focusing just on the SF numbers, what's the total? So just the SF numbers, the total would be 5, 9, and 10. So 5 plus 9 plus 10. It's 24. For the top, still focusing on just the San Francisco numbers, how many are trained? So just the San Francisco numbers, how many are trained? Nine. And the question is, are these two things equal? Right now, as fractions, hard to tell. So divide, convert them to decimals. So left side, 30 over 80, 0 0.375. Right side, 9 over 24, also 0 0.375. Are they equal? Yes, they are. So they are equal, which means to answer my question, yes, they are independent. Part D. Let A be the event that the person is from San Francisco. Let B be the event that the person prefers travel by plane. Are A and B mutually exclusive? Okay, so this is telling me which equation I need to check. And which one am I checking? We're asking about mutually exclusive, so we're checking this one. P of A and B equals zero. And then, as always, let me replace A and B with what it stands for here. A stands for San Francisco. And what's B? B is prefers travel by plane, so plane. Check the left, check the right. The right side is actually already done here, right? The right side is just zero. Left side. Left side is probably of SF and plane. This is not one of those conditional probabilities with the word given. So the bottom is going to be the total, which was 80. Up top, SF plane. How many are SF and plane? Remember, and means at the same time. So how many are from San Francisco and at the same time like plane? SF plane, 10, right? So these 10 people are from San Francisco and at the same time, they like plane. 10. Question, are they equal? Left side, right side. Um, obviously they, they are not equal, um, but let's find a decimal just, just for fun. So 10 over 80, 0 0.125. Okay, 0 0.125 versus zero, are they equal? Obviously not. Okay, so if it's no, to answer the question, this is not mutually exclusive. So pay attention to whether it's asking about mutually exclusive or independent, and that will tell you which equation you need to check. Okay, once you figure out which equation to check, find the left side, find the right side, and then check whether they are equal or not. If they are equal, it's a yes. If they're not equal, it's a no.